I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this, and if it falls apart at the end, I'll go to the other mic. It's okay, we got Dr. K. <laughs> I know I get there. <laughs> right off the top, I'm gonna wish my mother and father a happy anniversary, number 51. You're not here by accident. The Lord wants you here to hear this message. Maybe He wants you here for the praise and worship or for some other reason. But uh, I believe that God has something for each one of you here. All right, well, I just want to give you a quick introduction uh, to uh, who I am. I hope this works. Uh, my name is Alan Emery. I live in Fort Williams with my wife Kelly and our son Joseph, and we own and operate an apple orchard there. And we've been uh, coming to uh, New Covenant here for nearly a year, and since September, I believe. I want to thank the elders this morning for giving me an opportunity to speak. Do not take that lightly. Um, I've been hearing this message for a couple months now. They, they asked me to speak back in May, and we got shut down. I think I might have to switch over to, to the handheld. <laughs> yes, I don't know what's going on. He made us 
He said, it's not good for man to be alone. <clears throat> now, I'm not speaking about marriage today. This is for everyone. But God does not want us to be in isolation, to live under a rock, and not to have friends. <clears throat> in fact, he, he gave us the Great Commission to take the gospel to the other edge of the world, to share, to speak with people. So I want to tell you um, about the friend that we have in Jesus, and this friend we cannot do without. I had a friend growing up, and we were best friends. We did everything together, before school, during school, after school. We got in trouble together. <laughs> we were we were best friends. He was a firm kid, and so was I. Grew up in a Christian home, so did I. And we even went to college together. However, um, when we got to college, the cares and the lures of this world pulled him away from his faith. And to this day, I'm not sure if he's, if he, uh, if he's a believer today. So this morning, I want to talk to you about your friends. You'll find out who your true friends are in times of adversity. So the Bible talks a lot about uh, friends and and who's not your friend. And I want to say this morning that this world is not your friend. Amen, brother. Turn with me to First John chapter two. Um, 
A true friend hears and loves at all times. James 4.4 4. Adulterers and adulteress, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Now I know we all have parts in our heart that we struggle with. We're all human. And um, that's, that's something that's a, a daily uh, thing that we have to struggle with. But Jesus can transform your mind. He is the greatest brain surgeon there ever was. In Romans 12, verse 2, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable to the will of God. Jesus can renew your mind, but that doesn't just happen. You have to spend time with him. Jesus cares about who your friends are. We can't, we can't just treat him like an emergency 911. We need to commune with him every day. And that comes with prayer and fasting and Bible reading. And yes, I said fasting. That is not something that's commonly done anymore. You, come, you become like the people you hang around with. Let's hang around with Jesus. Uh, get to know him intimately. And, you know, one of the hardest things in a Christian life is to know if you're doing the will of God. So what type of friend should we have? Well, I'd like to say that Jesus is the best kind of friend that you can have. Amen. So I'd like to show a short video now describing how uh, Jesus is your best friend. Thank you. 
going. That was Pastor Shadrach Meshach Lockridge preaching. He was a longtime preacher in San Diego who has since died and gone to be with his king, Jesus. You know, there's no end to the descriptions of Jesus. He's indescribable. But uh, there's a few attributes uh, that I'd like to uh, tell you about this morning that make him a remarkable friend. So first of all, he's a pure friend. In Psalm 12, verse 6, tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. <clears throat> Jesus knows everything about you, your deepest, darkest secrets, yet he still wants to be your friend. And he calls out to you that you would repent of your sins, because he is holy. He is a holy God. Psalm 119.9, how can a man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. He desires that we take our problems to him. And, you know, he's, he's not going to gossip about what you tell him or go behind your back. You can tell him things in security and secrecy, and he cares about you, he cares about the things that you take to him. I've let him down many times, and he still loves me. David and Jonathan had a close friendship, but it pales in comparison to the friendship that Jesus desires to have with us. His motives are pure, his intentions are pure, his actions are pure, and his decisions are pure. Next, he's an approachable friend. You can go right to him in the throne room of grace, as it says in Hebrews 4.16, we don't need to go to a priest to confess our sins, and we don't need to pray to Mary for a blessing, and there's no hope in the Pope. <laughs> He's a sinner just like you and me, and needs to confess his sins just like you and I do. Jesus is never too busy. You know, if you book an appointment with a, a doctor, it's weeks or months before you get to see him. Jesus is available 24-7, 365. He's never in a bad mood. Jesus is perfect. <clears throat> and he loves everyone equally. Uh, children and adults alike. In Acts 10, 34 and 35. It says, Peter speaks of a truth that God is not a respecter of persons. Whoever fears him and lives righteously is accepted by him. Jesus just desires to come to him and commune with him. <coughs> Next, he is a life-giving, helping friend. In, um, in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, it says, Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and low in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. If you yoke up with Jesus, he'll carry you. I found that this week as I was preparing this message. I said, I said this message is too heavy for me to carry. And, and Jesus said, I'll carry it. Do you know why people commit suicide? It's because they feel like it's a hopeless situation, that nobody cares about them. They, they feel like that nobody loves them. I'm not a psychologist, I don't have a PhD, but I, I know one of the first things you need to understand is that Jesus loves you and cares for you and has a plan for your life. Jeremiah 29.11. Let's just go to that for a second. Mm -hmm. 
For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. <clears throat> he is your best friend, whether you feel him or not. Don't doubt in the dark what God has shown you in the light. And what that means is when you're going through a rough time, when you're in the valley, hold on to the promises that are in this book. Hold on, because you, you need to remember the promises that God has, has told you. He desires that we take our problems to him. John 15, four and five, Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. He is life. Apart from, from him, we just exist in this world. When we get to heaven, we will kick ourselves when we find out the resources that we had available to us. And we, uh, if we had only prayed according to his will, we spend so little time in prayer and we have such unbelief, we want to be independent and do things on our own strength. This world says you can do it on your own. You can be whoever you want to be, do what you ever want to do. Let me tell you about George Mueller. He never asked this world for anything, yet he raised thousands of kids in his orphanages and never asked for a penny, especially from the government. When each child was old enough to live on their own, they could each read and write, and he prayed over each child. And before they left, he put a, he gave them a Bible in their right hand. This is where he had uh, other Mike would have. He had a coin, and he put it in their left hand. And he said, give what is in your left hand, keep what is in your right hand, and you will always have enough. Yeah. Why do we not believe that anymore? Has God run out of resources? He has not changed. We have. We've stopped believing it. And finally, I want to say, Jesus is a saving friend. In John 15, 13, 14, Greater love hath no man than a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friend if you do what I command you, and that command is to love one another. He willingly lay down on that cross. He, he was a king in heaven and came down and willingly let them nail nails in his hands and feet. I don't know if you've ever been spat in your face but that is one of the deep, most degrading, humiliating things that can happen. They ripped out his beard. It, unbelievable what they did to him. He came to save those that were mocking him and swearing and cursing at him. The depravity of man is wicked. I'd like you to turn to Revelation chapter 21. Verse uh, 6 to 8. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is at first of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and adulterers, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. 
What greater gift could Jesus give us than to save us from our sins, the penalty of hell? Jesus is the greatest friend you'll ever know. But just like a good friend, he gives you the choice. You can drink of the fountain of water of life freely forever. Freely forever. But for those that reject Jesus, they will have their heart in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Look, I know it's not easy to hear, but that's what the Bible says. And I believe it. Every word of it. I didn't write the Bible. I just know that it's true and it's authoritative. There is a movement happening around the world that says Jesus is not the only way to heaven. And it's creeping up even amongst evangelical circles. It is an absolute lie from Satan. Jesus saves. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Satan always twists the truth or gives half truth. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he will never leave you. It is written throughout the Word of God. He, it is us that walk away from him and doubt whether he is there. He stood with Moses when he stood before Pharaoh, the most powerful man on the planet at that time. And he stood with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they refused to bow to the false uh, false God from the wicked king, and he'll stand with you too. If you ever get put in jail, you're sent in isolation for two weeks, just like uh, James Coates or Tim Stevens, but you know what? They can't take Jesus from you. The Apostle Paul, same thing. In 2 Timothy 4, 16 and 17, the Apostle Paul was deserted by all, but the Lord stood by him and strengthened him when his faith was on trial. Has your faith been on trial lately? Have you felt all alone or deserted by everyone? Have you been going through things that nobody seems to understand or care about? Maybe you need to confess something this morning. Maybe you're going through a trial or tribulation. Or does it feel like the forces of, of evil are pressing in on you on all sides? I'm going to invite you to come to the altar this morning in a moment. And uh, we're going we're to sing a song here in a moment. Maybe even now, uh, maybe you just want to intercede for somebody that you know is, is headed towards the lake of fire. You can intercede for them. Okay, Brad, you go ahead. God is here. His Spirit is here this morning. He's calling out to you. He's speaking to you. I just pray that you'll be obedient to the, to the Holy Spirit this morning. Okay, we can uh, we'll, uh, stand and sing what a friend we have in Jesus.
call out to you, you are there. In our times of trouble, you are there. Yes. God, I pray you will not look anywhere else but to you, God. Mm-hmm. And thank you, God, that you are a pure friend. And thank you that you are an approachable friend, a life-giving friend, and that you are a saving friend. You saved us so we can spend eternity with you. I pray, God, that we can have the boldness to go and share how you have changed our lives, how we can share that you are a friend, a friend of sinners. I pray, God, you just bless each and every one of us here this morning that we go and be salt and light in this 